Hi everyone, so I'm Matt. For those of you just watching this for the first time, and I am here in Inverness, and I'm about to take on the North Coast 500. So I'm sure a lot of people already know about the route. It is a, or road route, open to, to bikes, to cars, to motorcycles. It's been uh, used as a tourist route, and it is 516 miles in length, and I'm hoping to cover it in three days. Morning, it is just before six o'clock and this is Inverness Castle. So this is my starting point. Uh, typically, being Scotland, it's raining. Thankfully, not too much, but uh, forecast for the next at least two days, probably three is rain. So uh, yeah, I've, I've at least knew that beforehand, so I'm expecting rain. It's not too cold, thankfully, six o'clock in the morning, it's 13 degrees, so that's not too bad. Um, right, I'm not going to hang around because I've got a long way to ride today. And uh, yeah, 320 kilometers, I think. So better get cracking and uh, see how it goes. Uh, so far, at least, um, uh, I'm not that impressed. I was expecting to be on a nice little road by now. And uh, when I turned off in Gar, I was on this and I kind of know where I am. Uh, traffic is, overall it's okay, but there's a lot of lorries, a lot of lorries. And some of them are really impatient. I mean, I uh, just, yeah. So it's not the best to start, it's 50 k's in. On a big wide road, with loads of traffic, and it's raining. Could be a lot better. I just hope. I know I get to Balatin Bar just before 100 k's. I hope to God from there on it improves. So things are starting to open up a little bit now. Still got a big wide road. There's a bit less traffic. A bit more open. 75 k is done. There's another 250 to go. So Loch Loch Caron. This is the town. I'll be turning off shortly and starting Vilak Navarra, which is a big climb, biggest climb of the route. And now this is more like it, and the rain has stopped. So I'm three hours in, feeling all right, I'm feeling fine. It's been, uh, it's been really easy in terms of there's no climbing so far. Now things are about to change, and uh, yeah, this is where it should turn nice and narrow and twisty, and lots more views like this. This is nice. Oh, this is the start for Lachnabar. Seven kilometers. Oh no, I think it's about ten kilometers. Average ten, uh, seven percent. Yeah, I got those two backwards. Okay, ten kilometers, seven percent. And uh, one of the more famous climbs in Scotland and the UK. First time I've done it. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully not too many camp vans. It's a beautiful road. Looking behind occasionally get a view. Wind's picking up as a nice headwind. Although quite clear at the moment but traffic is a nightmare. Maybe I got unlucky with traffic at the start, but uh, no, it wasn't enjoyable. So uh, this is the this is the money ticket. Uh, look at that! That is amazing. Okay, 
Okay, Mark's out of 10. Scenery, 9. It's pretty special. Difficulty, oh, 7. Well, Grice is quite a bit harder. I'm not saying it's easy, but they're a lot harder. Total, 6. This type of thing lets it down. Too many cars. <laughs> Huge grin on my face. What an amazing descent. Ah, oh, just. Oh, yes. Now I'm happy. <laughs> that was wicked. This is more like it. <laughs> this is more like what I was expecting. And this is just, yeah, stunning. No other words for it. I had to slow down for this one. What a view. So it's Lake La uh, Loch Torridon. That's uh, Torridon right up ahead there in Shield Lake on the corner. Wow. Behind. Here we are, that's his number plate. Absolute. More problematic drivers again. I don't get the issue. I'm doing like a lot of speed. And I'm going the same speed as cars in front. And look. Here's a point where they can overtake, and this is the problem. We're on narrow roads. I'm not impeding them because there's a car in front. And that's what's holding them up. So right, here's the irony, 10 kilometers later, and that's the van, still right behind him. Just a load of selfish drivers. I, I don't know what they're trying to get at, you know. It's not bikes that are the problem, it's the car's going slowly. And then they have a go at me, and, and I'm sure other cyclists, so. Alright, rant over, hope to God things improve. I know this road now is uh, to a carriageway, I mean, a carriageway either side now for, for a little while. So, look, sign coming up. 76 miles to Alapur. Yeah, I just finished, uh, just filled up the water so I've got enough to get to the finish now. Uh, eight hours in, 230k, so, so 90, 90 left. Uh, in terms of my legs and how I'm feeling, I'm fine. This part of the route, I've only done it in a race situation before, so never really uh, stopped to look around. Nothing particularly good, I'll be honest. So uh, there's a nice section a little bit further on after Pulu, I think. Uh, yeah, crack on them. Good pace at the moment. Really, really pleased with how I'm doing pace wise. It's a nice little spot. Got a tailwind at the moment, so uh, progress is good. Just come up with a big little kicker. <coughs> ah. Weather's turned in out really nice actually. It's a nice uh, nice hill to head. Views are pretty good on this bit. There's Alaport! So a bit of a debrief after day one. So I'm here now in Alapur. 
and uh, today overall it's been it's been a, well actually it's been a bit of a mix in terms of speed it's been fine uh managed to do it was 320 k's finished that in pretty much 12 hours average speed worked out at about 29 kilometers an hour so it's faster quite a bit faster than i was expecting um in terms of the route yeah it's a bit of a mix the first 100 kilometers out of inverness are fast but also not very exciting lots of main road lots of lorries uh lots of cars in general even though i was out really early you know i left at six so uh that wasn't wasn't great although the overall you know the, the scenery and things were amazing so that that was fine then the descent off the top amazing one of the best descents i've ever done really fast uh, so much fun so that was a big big plus plus. and the views are pretty good in places and then you hit the main road after one last final big climb out hit the main road and start the way down to Alapur. And the last bit, again, is not, not particularly nice because you're on the main road and there's lots of lorries. Uh, got here then, just pretty much first thing I did, got some food down me. And now just waiting, uh, I'm gonna yeah, try and recover, keep eating some stuff. And up in the morning again, another big day. So probably up at six or up before six, up to, to leave at six. And yeah, hopefully, hopefully tomorrow will be a bit better. I tell you what, midges now are. <laughs> it's been fine until now. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna head in and chill out, recover, get ready for for another big day tomorrow. It's 270 kilometers with 4,000 meters of climbing, and a sore tooth profile. It just like zigzag, you know, really lots and lots of little climbs no huge climbs i think the highest point is only about 300 meters and that's quite early on but just in and out of bays a lot so um yeah hopefully hopefully tomorrow goes as well in terms of speed <coughs> and uh, so from alapool to thurso tomorrow okay so uh end of day one i thought i'd just do a quick um just show what I've, what i'm packed basically what i brought which is uh, not much uh, staying in hotels don't really need so much so uh, well what we got stolen my daughter's toothpaste toothbrush um, come staying in hotels at all the other toiletries I don't really need this is a midge net and I've got a laundry bag here just put dirty clothes in this is my um, spares so I have got in there I just chucked my normal saddle bag in there and then I've also got a couple of extra TPU tubes, so lightweight tubes. I think I've got three two tubes in total. Two, uh, three, a uh, two are TPU and one butyl in there. Two CO2 canisters. Um, there's a pump on the bike. And what else we got in there? Uh, oh, some chamois cream, uh, spare lube, um, valve extenders, uh, chain spare chain link uh, so that, that is in there I've got a spare jersey in case we have a wet day this is just in case I need to strap it's a velcro strap for strapping things onto the bike two pairs spare pairs of socks because I find if it's wet feet are the are the worst pair of quite lightweight gloves in case it, again if it rains uh, it's my casual clothes so just a top and a pair of shorts and this is my waterproof, which is a um, Gore Shake Dry, so a really good waterproof. And I've got electrics stuff, so I've got a battery. I've also got a three-point plug, um, just charging some bits and pieces. Uh, in terms of the food I'm carrying, it's a bit of a mixture, really. So I've got some sort of normal type food, so cereal bars and these OTE flapjack things, they're quite nice. And then some, um, some gels. I had quite a few gels today, actually. These are quite easy to take, quite small. And then this is got a big caffeine shot if you're really struggling. And then pick some Kendall mint cake up on the way. That's that's really good. Uh, and then electrics, just charger for the phone, charge cable for the phone, charger, uh, charge cable for the um, lights and 
things like that. And then everything else is on the bike. Um, yeah, so quite minimal. All fits in here quite nicely. Uh, just put the waterproof within that then to keep it accessible. Uh, I haven't weighed it, but yeah, there's probably not much weight, weight in total. So, day two, just leaving Ellipool. Another morning where it's raining. Uh, I think again, forecast is to improve as I uh, as I get further north, so fingers crossed. Hoping the roads will be generally better than yesterday. And the views as well, I'm hoping. I think today's gonna be the best day for that. I think this is one of the high points today. And this is a bit more like it. Just empty, barren wilderness. Yeah, this is kind of what I was expecting more of yesterday. This is what I came here for. It's more like it. And now. Uh, a lot more people around here. It's obviously what they came here for. Today is delivering a lot more. I mean, this is this is what I was expecting. Ah, and lots of uh, short, sharp little climbs like this in and out of bays. But uh, yeah. This is just much, much nicer. Oh. The colour of the water. Today's making me want to come back. Yesterday was making me want to go home. Ah, uh, that's what you call a view. Oh. Keeps giving today. Brutal, but amazing. I just had a quick little stop, grab some uh, extra food, some water, and a little village. It's absolutely rammed there. I think it's the first village for a while, so probably why. Back on the sea, quite a nice little spot. Now I'm heading north and then go almost immediately back south. Going basically behind those mountains over there. So 120 k's to go today. That looks like a lovely little bait. So I think this section might be one of my favourites so far. It's uh, not quite so tough. The mountains are not so big and you haven't got like a massive sea view but it's just so varied and you just look up there it's like oh, it's just stunning roads are relatively easy quite mellow oh, it's a lot of fun really really enjoying this section so from this point on today I'm going east pretty much all the way I'm hoping that the wind's not too bad 
because uh, that's going to be tough. Landscape's still pretty amazing. See the road where I've come from back then. Yeah, this is what it's all about. This is why you come here. So I'm right up now on the very north. This bit seems it's changed again. Seems much greener. I don't know if that's just because the sun has come out. And look at those sandy beaches. It's beautiful. This last section today, last uh, 80k or whatever, proven to be quite tough. Mostly the wind, the road surface as well, it's pretty rough in places, making it hard work. I uh, still got I think 25, I don't know, 40 kilometers left. It's another hour and just over an hour and a half maybe. Oh, I think that's uh, finished today, it's been a tough finish. Just, yeah, oh, nasty. So I've had to make uh, one unplanned stop. Feeling a bit low, so I needed to get some, uh, uh, just to drink something, get, get some energy. And I've run out of water as well. I've only got 15 miles to Thurso, but uh, just this last section is really taking it out of me. And uh, yeah, thankfully end of today is in sight. So day two done. So a bit of a debrief from today. Today, was from Ullapool to um, Thurso, 272 kilometers, 4,200 meters of climbing, and I'm cooked. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been amazing in lots of different ways, but it's also been really tough. So the the, the start was really open. Um, but I could tell straight away that it was going to be a better better day than yesterday. And then as soon as you started getting into the little scenic roads, the it was just, that was why I came here, the, the roads that you're riding and the, and the places that you're able to see. Tiny little roads, amazing little inlets and secluded bays. It was just, it was fantastic. It, you know, that's the reason why you come here. And then big landscapes, big views of mountains, uh, just yeah superb the last 80k was really hard it's more open you you lose the mountains and it's just really really windy and uh, I had a headwind and a, well, a head crosswind it just made it really challenging especially the last last 30k especially I was um, I was struggling I had to make some an extra stop and I was wondering what I'm gonna do Oh, uh, and I'm actually staying just outside there, so it's only three miles outside, but I thought, I just assumed I'd ride back in for food tonight. But uh, <laughs> I got nothing left. <laughs> so luckily, I found somewhere that does a takeaway with delivery. So I'm expecting some food at some point. Uh, luckily, I got enough change with me. So, it's time to start day three. It's not raining, first morning it's not raining. Um, still windy, but not as windy as yesterday. And uh, yeah, still another early start. Hopefully get this done fairly quickly. I really, really hope I get a tailwind because the wind is forecast to be quite strong later on. Um, showers forecast as well, so 
we'll see. We'll just try and get it done now. So, made it to John and Groves. Should be excited, but um, just been hell. Wind's been really strong all the way here, doing like 12 miles an hour. Took over an hour to get here. And it's about 13 miles, so yeah, it's uh, it's horrendous. And I know I'm gonna have a headwind going back at least to start off with. So part of me just wants to stay here. I, uh, I've had enough already. I've only been out an hour. So um, yeah, not the not the best of starts today. So I'm now on the A9. I'm on this road for 100 miles all the way to Inverness. It's a main road, an arterial road. There's no other option. It's busy, a lot of lorries. Um, the views are rubbish. It's just started raining. Thankfully, I've got a tailwind now. So that's making progress a bit quicker, but um, it's not a very nice way to end, uh, end the route. So my route has uh, brought me off onto a quieter, narrower lane. I'll be honest, I'm very, very pleased. The A9 is crap. And it's really spoiling this route, I'll be honest. It's, uh, it's too busy, just too big a road. It's no fun whatsoever to to ride down it and uh, I never want to ride it ever again I'm gonna have to join it back in a bit so this is just a nice break about 60k to go uh, most of that back on the A9 That was not pleasant up there. <laughs> the last two miles. So I made it in the Nest Castle, North Coast 500 done. So do I think uh, it's it's not great. Today really spoils it. Just not good. I'm glad to have finished. So I'm now uh, I'm now back in Wales a few days post uh, NC500. So it's a bit of a chance to reflect and although I still think exactly the same about day three there's uh, there have been some positive things you know the, the, the ride as a whole is one that I'm gonna really remember and there are parts that um, that I definitely recommend I maybe just wouldn't recommend it as uh, as I did it so I've also been given some tips on on routes and alternative routes so uh, yeah just sort of my final thoughts on the on the ride and the way it can be done uh, I'd maybe if, if I was doing it again I would consider not starting at Inverness and starting somewhere out west the first 100k to get to Loch Caron was nothing nothing particularly special and then one big recommendation is to do Balaknabar as early as possible in the day I mean I was there at nine o'clock in the morning and it was still quite busy 
I would say get there for even eight or if not earlier and then hope that you have a clear run because it's a stunning climb you just don't want much traffic because there's not much room for passing so the cars cause problems and then you, know, you, you really lose your flow if you're having to stop because cars in front of you are stopping to let other cars go to come by so um, so do that as early as you can I think there are alternative routes from the town I think it's called Tung or that area you can you can head south from there don't bother going to John O'Groats there's nothing at John O'Groats it's unless you really really want to get a picture by the sign um, it's it's nothing nothing special there no no particular reason to get there so I would uh, yeah take one of those alternative routes apparently they are more scenic and a lot quieter that will then take you down to Tain and from there you can take smaller roads than I did you can from Tain you can pretty much avoid the A9 almost all the way to, to Inverness and then that would, would take out that whole final day which spoiled it for me and also if you if you plan on doing it look at the towns and the villages look where you can stop look where you can resupply there are plenty of towns and villages along the way the it's a really touristy route so there are places in almost every little town or village to there's a little shop or a cafe or places where you can where you can stock up so you don't need to take too much with you use use what's there and then you, you can travel a bit lighter and you'll be a bit quicker as a result but um, I guess then overall from my take from it is that western coast is absolutely stunning I would definitely recommend anyone go out there uh, for me I want to go back I want to do that section again I want to also go and see the islands so that's my next trip up there will be do some island hopping maybe do that west coast come back down and uh, enjoy more of of the western side of Scotland because it was it was absolutely amazing hopefully you enjoyed the the video and uh, the ride that I've done and uh, yeah maybe inspired some people to do to do something similar although like I said I wouldn't recommend doing <laughs> the route as it is I think it's just too um, it's trying to cater for too many people